It's a wonderful shade of uh, green, I think, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's not brown, is it? Yeah, like, it's really mixed with the purple water. In fact, they cleaned it to the point that you now get sun in it. Welcome back to Mondays with me. And as you can see, we're in Paris. This, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm not right now, but there, 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 before we were. For those of you keeping track, this is episode L, which fits nicely with the city of love, the city of light. And uh, I'm going to show you this week how to visit Paris like a local. The Musée d'Orsay is a great place to start uh, to get your culture muscles warmed up. You could happily wander around here all day, but if you just want a splash of art in your morning or afternoon, uh, you can quite happily enjoy it for a couple of hours. There's not too much uh, art fatigue <laughs> here as there's an excellent mix of painting, sculpture uh, and architecture and even some furniture but this was closed um, when we visited this time. Which you, so yeah you can just wander around it quite peacefully um, and as it's set in a big old train station you can appreciate a lot from the, from the balconies as well. On the first floor, there's a restaurant with amazing ceilings, so try to aim for afternoon tea there um, if you if you want to just be able to appreciate it at ease. Uh, I think this is from I think the afternoon tea is from 3 p.m. If not, the top floor has a lovely cafe as well, um, which you can use as a pit stop before wandering around the Impressionist Gallery uh, and gazing through the old clock faces at the Paris skyline and going into this uh, this room that we spent a bit of time in, um, which was yeah recently opened. Well, it wasn't open the last time I visited. Um, it was quite fun, as you can see. As with most holidays, um, food played quite a big part of our recent trip. Um, and this is the best cabri in the world. Uh, it's called the Avant Comptoir. Um, I'll put a link to their TripAdvisor just below. And this is part of the uh, crep tour that me and some friends used to do on our on our year abroad in Paris. So I'm not going to be showing you too much haute cuisine, but for the best places for a meal on the go or just very nice cheap food, I'm your guy. And so is this guy. This guy is the guy. Mine is absolutely excellent. Look, I mean, just look at the denseness of that. Oh, and I've just spilt it all over my... Oh, oh, God. Oh, God, I'm... Oh. It's dripping everywhere. I don't want to associate myself. Josh is absolutely loving it. Now, you can basically walk everywhere, um, but to get across town you might want to get the metro. If you're in Paris for longer than a day and not on your own, it's worth getting a set of 10 tickets. Uh, this works out, well, not much cheaper, but enough cheaper. Don't bother with taxis though, as traffic is less than ideal nearly all the time. Where are we getting off and where are we? We're getting off at um, Montparnasse Bienvenue. Okay. The Tour Montparnasse is a disgusting walk on the beautiful face of Paris, which obviously makes it the best place to view Paris from. Why on earth would you want to queue for hours and pay 17 euros to go up the Eiffel Tower or 12 euros to go up the Arc de Triomphe when this means you miss out on seeing them? The Tour Montparnasse is higher than both of them, uh, giving you a view of the whole city, and with the little hashtag tourist hack <laughs> of the Ciel de Paris, which is the restaurant in the Tour de Montparnasse, it's also cheaper. Instead of paying the 15 euros to get to get to the panoramic viewing pa platform at the top of the tower, you pay a third of the price uh, for a comfy seat and a coffee with these views. As in many facets of life, obviously confidence is key here, so when you're walking into the tower, just say, especially if you speak French, but just say you're going to the restaurant uh, and the guard will point you to the correct elevator. If you're a baller or you want to treat your other half to something nice, you can have a meal or champagne here, uh, but if, like us, you're here to trick the system, have a tea or coffee. From my experience, the waiting staff are often quite unpleasant, 
to people who are obviously there for the view rather than the food, but don't let that bother you. La du Falafel in, uh, on the Rue des Rosières, in the heart of Le Marais, is known as being the best place for falafel in Paris, if not the world. Now, what most people don't know is that there's a secondary shop just 100 metres down the road from the hour queue that you'll see. So, here it is on the map. Go there. It's amazing. You won't be disappointed. I started writing about the Louvre and it quickly turned into a rant, so basically I'm just going to dedicate next week's episode to Mona Lisa. But, basic guide to the Louvre, you'll never be able to explore the whole museum in one visit to Paris, so choose an area you want to discover and explore until you need another coffee. Two things I don't have footage of are Shakespeare and Company and the Orangerie, because I was too busy enjoying them both to film them, so here's a lamp from our Parisian Airbnb, but you definitely want to visit both of these. One is a great bookshop, and the other has some of Monet's best stuff to just admire. No, don't, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, it's video. Yeah. Will's first ever escargot. What do you think? It tastes a bit like grass, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for this week. See you for Mona Lisa next week. Bye!